Hey guys, welcome back to the fourth and final part of my Ludo upcycle. So in the previous part, we added the body wrap and the head wrap to our mouse. We added in his nose, his muzzle, his mouth, and we also added in his eyes. But there's one very key feature missing that we haven't added yet, and that's his ears. So I'm gonna go back to my brush mat now, and we're gonna add his ears in, and we're also gonna finish off his arms as well. So I'm gonna move my mouse out of the way and I'm gonna bring my brush mat back in. So what we wanna do is we wanna create two smallish piles with the Shetland core wall onto our brush mat. Nothing too massive because these are gonna form our ears. So he's quite a small, he's a wee guy. He's a wee little guy. So we don't wanna make him, so we don't wanna make his ears too big. So I think that's probably about right. And then I'm just gonna take my multi-tool and I'm just going to felt some small circular shapes into the two mounds of wool that we've just added to the brush mat. And then once I've got a rough circular shape, I'm just going to fold over those loose ends into the centre of what's going to be his ear. So we create a nice neat edge and we're also really getting that circular shape defined. bit there that's a bit loose. I'm just going to lift that up. And then I'm just going to flip it over and do the same on the other side. I'm just going to bring this one in a bit more central and we're going to do the same thing. So bringing in those edges, creating a nice neat curved edge to our ear. Just be careful when you're kind of pushing these fibres into the centre of the ear that you don't accidentally kind of miss your timing and stab yourself in the finger because that that will hurt. Seven needles are definitely worse than one needle, I can, uh, I can assure you. I'm just going to flip it over and do the same on the other side. There we go. So we've got our two mouse ears. The final thing we're going to do with our ears before we add them to the mouse is add a touch of pink. So I've got my flesh coloured merino bats here and I'm just going to put a little bit in the centre of each ear and then I'm just going to felt that down too. There we go. So our ears are now ready to attach to our mouse's head. So I'm going to bring my mouse back in and I'm going to take one of my ears that we've just made and I'm just gonna pinch it at the very bottom where we've got these loose fibers here, okay? I'm then gonna flip him onto his side and I'm just gonna position his ear and just look at him just to see where that looks good for me. And this is very personal preference now. Obviously you don't want his ear up here because that would just look weird or down here, but you know, somewhere kind of around that kind of right side on an angle. Um, I reckon, oh, quite maybe yeah i reckon about here so what i'm going to do now i've got the mouse in position i'm going to push him really firmly into my mat i'm still holding my ear with my right hand i'm going to swap hands now and push it into the mouse's head with my left hand and then i'm going to take my fine twisted needles and i'm just going to tack in those loose fibers that are hanging down on the back of his head just to help me to anchor things into position a bit and then I'm just gonna remove my hand and then felt it in a bit more on the sides. And then once it's felted down a little bit, I'm just gonna turn it round. I'm just gonna maneuver, maneuver everything a little bit, make, making sure that it all looks correct and doesn't look weird. So just have a play with the positioning and if you're unhappy with it, you can just remove it as long as you haven't felted it in too heavily and then just reposition it on the mouse. And I've done that many times, especially when I'm adding my second ear in and it just doesn't match the first ear, it doesn't look symmetrical. You will just pull it off, reposition it and then start again. And then once you're happy with the actual position, that's when you can really properly felt it into place. So I'm just gonna go down the center, the inner center of the ear as well, and just get it felted in this side too. So it's kind of double locked onto our head. Let's spin that up there. Okay, 
Okay, and just keep checking it and making sure that it looks natural and as you want it to look. It doesn't need to look like mine, it just needs to be what you're happy with, the look that you're going for. Because we've all got different ideas about what looks good, what doesn't, what looks natural, what doesn't. It's really important that you go with your own thoughts in relation to this and, and don't feel that you have to kind of copy me exactly. Because you might look at this and think, oh, I don't know about that, Charlotte. I don't know if I would have done it that way. So that's the beauty of art, isn't it? You can just experiment and practice with your own style. That's what I love about it. So I've added the first ear, so I'm gonna add in the second ear now. And this is always more tricky, as I said before, because you're trying to get it looking the same as the first ear. So I think that is pretty good. So I'm gonna hold that down into position. And I'm just gonna initially tack that down again so it can't go anywhere. And then I'm gonna let go and I'm just gonna felt down those loose fibers Felt everything down until it's all nicely integrated into the rest of the mouse. So his ears are now attached. So you can see they're looking great, very mousy. They're a little bit oversized, but I don't mind that. I quite like that cartoony look, but you could of course make yours slightly smaller if you wanted to, to make them look a bit more realistic. So one thing I forgot to do in the previous tutorial is add his eyebrows. So I'm gonna do that now. So I'm gonna take my fine twisted needles again and I'm just going to do an upside down rainbow shape about half a centimetre above the mouse's eyes that we felt it in. So take your time doing this. And I always tend to go a little bit thicker towards the nose area and then a little bit narrower going outwards. But I like the upside down eyebrow because it gives that slightly sort of surprised, maybe slightly confused look to him. And of course he's concentrating and he may be a bit confused with the rules of the game. So I think it's good to give him that kind of confused eyebrow look. So I'm just gonna do the same with the other side. There we go, so I've added his eyebrows in now. So he's looking a little bit more confused, a little bit more like he's really trying to concentrate on something. So the very last thing we need to do is just finish wrapping his arms. So I'm gonna go back to my Shetland core wall. I'm just gonna take a small amount and I'm just gonna split it in half. And then I'm just gonna place one piece across his shoulder, what would be his shoulder, so that it's kind of going across his chest area. I'm gonna felt that down into the torso of the mouse, those loose fibers. And then once that's all anchored into position, I'm then just gonna wrap again around our mouse's arm. There we go. And then once I've gone round with all of the wall, I'm just gonna tack that into place. And then just felt it all down. So you can see it's a bit thicker than this arm here that we haven't wrapped twice. It just gives a bit more shaping to our mouse, makes him look a little bit more realistic in terms of his proportions. And then I'm going to do the same thing with the second piece. And this time, because we're doing the opposite arm, I'm gonna start off by felting it into the back. This is purely because I'm right-handed. You may find that actually you don't need to do this, but I just find it easier from a dexterity point of view to wrap the wool on this side the other way. But, um, but experiment and, and have a go yourself with what you find is easier. And then you'll find your own way of doing things. So I'm just gonna wrap that round all the way back up to the top. And then holding, I'm just holding that down with my nail there. And then I'm just gonna felt that down into the arm and a little bit into the chest of our mouse. Just making sure that everything is nicely felted together so it all looks lovely and consolidated. I'm just gonna lift his arm up there. Just felt under his armpit as well. Make sure he hasn't got any fuzz under his armpits. And do the same on the other side. 
So there we go, our mouse is finished and he's eagerly awaiting to get stuck into this Ludo game. So let's not hold him back guys, let's get him involved. So let's get the Ludo game out. So here we are with our Ludo game ready to upcycle in true money for nothing style. So if there's any money for nothing producers watching this, you know, you haven't got a needle felter yet. So, you know, I'm, I'm here if you want me guys, okay? Just saying, I'm just joking, not really. <laughs> we've got our first little mouse made that we made in the tutorial and then I've also made a second mouse which is a more of a girly mouse I don't know if they're, they're together I don't know if they're a girlfriend boyfriend but she's also going to be participating in the Ludo game now I had a read of the instructions after saying I didn't actually know the rules of Ludo and I very quickly discovered that there is a very key piece missing from this game which I didn't realize at the time because I've never actually played Ludo so I wasn't aware that this piece was missing until the other day when I actually read the instructions and it's quite a key piece because it's the board it's the board that you play Ludo on and I thought to myself hmm how am I going to get around this because the board's kind of essential to make it look authentic and then I had a brainwave a proper kind of like ding light bulb moment what if the mice make their own board uh -huh. so i'm going to move my mice out the way and i had this idea about using crayons and i have done this before in previous sculptures where i've made these very tiny letters from the mice say to like father christmas or something like that and i've used a pencil or a crayon and i've done it in this really kind of childlike font so it looks like the mouse has written it themselves so i thought what if we did something similar but did a Ludo game board. So I've raided my daughter's craft boxes and I found a box of crayons. So my plan is that I'm gonna draw the Ludo game onto one of these wooden boards and then kind of have the crayon box and the crayons on the side as well to show that they've kind of used them. And I might even have one of the mice holding the crayon mid kind of doing the board. So that's the plan. I don't know if it's gonna work, but I've got quite a few quite a few of these blocks so if it doesn't work it doesn't matter I can just do another one and can do something else it's not a problem so I'm going to do that and then I'm going to have the mice kind of sat round one holding some dice and then sort of maybe looking at the counters and then try and incorporate the instructions and the box into it as well and the box is really important I really want to incorporate this into the sculpture because it tells you what the game is and I think without the box it's really confusing and again it adds that lovely nostalgia to the whole piece so I'm going to move everything out the way now I've actually had to google what a ludo board looks like because I have absolutely no idea so thank god for google and pinterest is all I can say. So what I found is that there's four colours on the board and very luckily for me they are the exact same colours I have in my crayon box. So you know it was meant to be guys clearly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by drawing with my blue crayon and I'm going to do it in a slightly haphazard way because I don't want it to be perfect because our mouse has drawn it. I just draw one square first of all and you know it doesn't matter if it's a bit rudimentary and then I'm going to go back in with my next colour which is red which is apparently next to the blue and I'm going to do the same thing again so I'm going to start about a centimetre oh, hopefully this red's going to show up oh is it more of a pink oh how annoying oh we'll see how it looks I can always try and find a red crayon if I need to and then I'm going to get my green and I'm just going to draw another square down here. And the nice thing with the crayons is because they're wax, they can't rub off. They're pretty permanent on this wood, which makes me happy. I think I just broke a crayon. Oh dear. Well, hopefully my daughters will never find out. Karma's going to come back and get me for the destruction of the crayons, I think. And then finally, I'm just going to do the yellow. And the nice thing with this is, because it's meant to be the mouse that's done it, because as you know, mice do have poseable thumbs and they are prolific in, in writing little notes and, and creating their own kind of makeshift board games. So what I want to just do with the yellow is make sure that it can be seen. There we go. And then once I've got my four squares in place, then I have to draw four squares in each block. So I'm just gonna do that. Again, nothing 
massively technical here and I'm not overly bothered if they're not symmetrical which is unusual for me because I am a stickler for symmetry most of the time but on this occasion I'm going to let it go just like Elsa there we go so that's the first one done I'm just going to do the yellow now same thing and now I'm going to add my blue and I will see you very shortly once I've completed all of my different colour blocks. Right, so I've used all of the crayons and I've created my Ludo board now. So the next thing I want to do is incorporate the mice into this. So I'm going to take my girly mice that I made and I'm going to just see which crayon looks best in her hands because she's going to be holding the crayon like this onto the board. So I quite like the blue. That does look quite sweet. Let me just try it with the red just see how that looks oh I love that too oh that's so lovely oh I think I'm gonna go with the red that's really nice so the next thing I'm gonna do is take my super glue because I love super glue so I've got my gorilla glue here I really like gorilla glue because it just sticks really well really firmly and it sticks really quickly but you can use any other super glue if you want to I'm not sponsored by gorilla glue or anything like that it's just my um, it's just my personal preference really so the first thing I'm going to do is make sure that the word crayon can be seen on the crayon because I think that's just quite a nice touch I think that's quite important I don't want to cover that over so I'm gonna take the crayon away and on the back of the crayon I'm just gonna add a little bit of the super glue not lots and lots just a little bit on the paper and then I'm just gonna place that across the body of my mouse but I just want to make sure that's good that it sits properly and that the crayon is in contact with the board so I just want to get the positioning of it right so that the mouse is holding it in the right in the right location so once I've got that in place I'm just going to add a touch of super glue to her hand here not too much just a tiny dot and I'm going to just bring that round like that and I'm just going to hold that in place for uh, about a minute or so just so that it adheres and sets nicely and then I'm just going to glue her second hand down just touching the crayon there so she's kind of bending over and holding it into position like she's actually drawing with it so I'm just going to get another little dot of glue just on her tiny teeny tiny hand not too much we don't want so much that it can be seen on the sculpture and I'm just going to hold that into position as well. And the nice thing with her having a wire armature is that you can bend her and pose her into different positions, which really lends itself to this kind of sculpture. So I'm just going to hold that there for a few seconds whilst it sticks. Okay, there we go. So the crayon is all stuck down to our mouse now. So the next thing I want to do is just maneuver her head down slightly on an angle so it looks like she's really concentrating on getting this right, this board game and, and drawing it all out properly. So she's kind of looking like this at the moment. So I'm going to just sit her on my board. And I think I'm just going to move her tail down. And it's all about getting the positioning right here. I want the crayon to be in contact with the wood. So I'm going to have her on a slight angle. I'm not going to have her on dead centre. So then I'm just going to add a little bit more glue just to her feet. And also just where her tail makes contact with the wood as well. And then I'm just going to position her into place. And then just hold her there for a few seconds while she sticks down to the wood. The next thing I want to do with this piece is I want to incorporate the dice into the game. Just because I think it looks really cool to have the dice kind of in action on the board that's been created by our mouse. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have one of the dice on the board itself. I think I'm going to have it on sixes as well. And then I'm going to have another dice in the hand of the mouse we made. And I'm going to glue it to his little paw there. So I'm just going to go back to my super glue. And I'm just going to place a touch, tiny amount, onto his little paw. And then I'm just going to hold that down and wait for it to whoop, wait for it to stick down. Don't do that, Charlotte. Uh, where is it? That one there. There we go. I'm just going to give it a bit of a squeeze to make sure it sticks. Hopefully I won't super glue my fingers together, which I have been known to do. 
I can't remember who it was now. Somebody sent me a really good hack for super glue and it was, I'm sure it was acetone. It was, I can't remember who sent it to me, but thank you so much. You have literally changed my life with that tip. I never knew that you could take super glue off with acetone. I've been using it on everything ever since. So yeah, so the last time I super glued my fingers together, I thought, ah, I know what I need to do. I just need to get the acetone and all will be well with the world again. So I can't remember, I'm so sorry, I can't remember who sent me that hack, but thank you so much. You've literally blown my mind and changed my life at the same time. So thank you. There we go. So that dice is now stuck to his hand. I like that a lot. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stick him onto this other piece of wood and I have cheated a bit. You've probably noticed that the wood has changed. So I changed it from that other piece that I had because it just looked too different. This wood, in terms of selling it as a sculpture, was just far too different to this piece of wood here. And I like this because it looks more aged. So I've taken this one away and luckily I had another piece that looks very similar to this piece already. So I've just incorporated that into the sculpture rather than using two different pieces of wood because I just thought it just looked, it was a bit, it was just a bit too jarring on the eyes. I didn't like the flow of it. And this is a lot more integrated together with the two pieces of wood that are effectively from the same block. So that's why I've changed it round. So the next thing I'm gonna do is just glue my mouse down onto his little seating area. So again, I'm just gonna put a bit of glue on his feet and just on the base of his tail there. And I think I'm gonna put him about here. Here looks good. I'm just gonna hold him into place whilst he adheres to the wood. You could probably use these as quite good bookends actually. I mean, they haven't got a lot of weight to them, so you couldn't hold up like a massive big load of Shakespeare plays or anything like that. But I think for just a small amount of children's books or something like that, they could work quite nicely together. So my little mouse is now stuck down. He's got the dice in his hand and I've also glued the other die onto the board game as well. So the next thing to do is just piece everything together if you like and just kind of position things in an aesthetically pleasing way so it looks lovely and integrated and like they're playing a game of Ludo. So I've got some counters here that I've taken from the box and I've also realised that there's quite a few counters missing but there appears to be a lot of the greens and blues which is quite handy. So I'm going to place them initially just on the game just to see where they sort of sit nicely and I think I'm going to put one on there maybe two two on the board here like that so I think that looks quite nice and it kind of shows the game in action so I'm going to stick those down so I've glued those down and my little mouse with the blue counters he's just about to get his first counter home so I reckon he's probably going to win this game so what I want to do next is I want to incorporate the instructions into this and also the box itself. So it's all about positioning now because I want this to be looked at at different angles because you've got different things going on and you can also move these things around as well. So you can kind of reposition this into another area if you wanted to. So you could reposition it so the mouse is, well, it doesn't really work there, but you could reposition it so the mouse is here instead. So I want it to work at many different angles just to make it aesthetically exciting and pleasing for whoever's looking at it. So I'm just gonna spin it back to the way I had it originally. So I wanna have my Ludo box in there 100% because I wanna make it as obvious as possible that that is the game that they're playing. And I also wanna have my instructions there I don't know whether to have them out fully. I don't know if it's a bit too wide, unless I have them like this, and then have the game like this. Ooh, I like that. That's nice. Because it's almost like they've opened the instructions up to read them. My only concern about having the instructions out onto the actual sculpture itself is that they're quite fragile, they're quite, it's quite thin paper and you can see it's already starting to tear here. And my worry is that it's gonna degrade more if I attach it to the sculpture. I really worry about damaging them because they're so lovely. Oh, I don't know what to do. Okay, I've made the executive decision that I'm gonna keep the instructions inside the box just because they're so precious, they're so lovely. I don't want them to be damaged. And I'm thinking that if this sculpture goes into a shop, which it definitely is, it's gonna get manhandled and knocked around and these are gonna get damaged if they're actually out of the box. So I'm gonna leave them inside the box. And I think whoever buys it is gonna have a lovely little treat because they'll open the lid up out of curiosity and then they'll see in there the extra counters and they'll see the little Ludo instructions 
options as well. So I think that's quite nice. It reminds me of the Jolly Postman um, back in the 80s. I don't know if any of you remember that, but I remember having the book as a child and then you had all the envelopes and you'd open up the envelopes and there'd be little letters and puzzles and things inside. And it's that excitement and anticipation that I want to create with this game. So I think that's quite a nice kind of interactive feature. So I'm going to position the Ludo box about here and I like it on the corner there and then I'm going to have my additional crayons kind of scattered around as well. So I'm just going to glue my crayons into position and I'm not too worried about the word crayon being on display this time because our little mouse has already got that covered. So I'm going to have this one going this way. I'm just going to hold that down for a few seconds whilst it sticks down and then I'm going to have these two going in the opposite direction. And I'm going to have this one, I think, just going slightly onto the other board. I quite like that. So it kind of brings them together so they're not quite as separate. Right, whilst they dry in position, I'm just going to glue down my dice shaker as well. I'm just going to place that just behind my little mouse. And he's decided that he's going to go rogue and he's going to throw the dice with his hands rather than worrying about sticking them in a shaker. And then finally, I'm just going to put some glue on the bottom of my Ludo box. So causing the most the minimal amount of damage and then just placing that on the corner of my second piece of wood. And I'm going to let that set and once everything is dry and nicely firmly in position our sculpture will be finished. So this makes me so happy. I'm properly smiling inside because it just looks so cute, even if I do say so myself. So our mice are in position. We've got the first mouse here with the crayon, and then we've got our second mouse with his tongue out, just concentrating on throwing that dice. We've got the dice incorporated into the sculpture and the Ludo game. So I'm so happy with this. So I'd be really interested to know what you guys think. I'm just going to spin it round so you can kind of get it in all angles. I'm actually going to keep the blocks of wood separate rather than trying to stick them together because I really like the idea of them being quite interactive. So whoever buys this can kind of move it around and change the position of where the mice are and everything else. There's our cheeky little mouse with his tongue out and you've got the dice shaker in there as well. And then obviously you've got the lid that's still free so you can take the lid off and you've got the instructions and the extra counters inside. So I'm really super chuffed with the sculpture and I really hope you've enjoyed watching me make it and hopefully I've given you guys some inspiration to upcycle anything that's hanging around your house or any items that are unloved and haven't had a purpose for a little while. If you enjoyed this video please like it because it really helps me to get these videos out to more and more people that want to take up the art of needle felting. If you haven't had a chance to yet if you could subscribe to my channel as well that would be amazing because again it just helps with that pesky YouTube algorithm and helps me to get out to more and more people and really show them how awesome and amazing needle felting is. So I really hope you like that and I will see you tomorrow with more needle felting hints and tips. Have a wonderful day and I will see you soon. Bye.